In this video, I'm going to walk you through a full machine learning project. We'll be using real-world historical data on flight delays and building a prediction model using XGBoost. We'll walk through data pre-processing, feature engineering, exploratory data analysis, model training, and performance evaluation, all within less than 13 minutes. By the end of the video, we will have covered the full process of a machine learning analysis. But before we begin, if you find this tutorial helpful, please like and subscribe to the Deep Charts channel for more videos on how to implement advanced machine learning techniques. The first part of our workflow is to import the relevant libraries. The pandas library will be used for data manipulation and wrangling, and numpy for numerical and mathematical operations. We'll use the XGBoost library for model creation and generating predictions, but you could alternatively try out a different model from the scikit-learn library or other libraries. Scikit-learn is used for various utilities, such as splitting our data into training and testing data sets, as well as the calculation of evaluation metrics. And finally, matplotlib and seaborn are for data visualization. If you don't have these libraries installed in your Python environment, you can install them by running pip install, followed by the library names in your command prompt, terminal, or Jupyter notebook cell. The next part of our project workflow is to import our data set. I'll be using this flight delay data set that was posted to Kaggle. It is an extract of nearly 500,000 flights that either began or ended in the United States by different US air carriers. You can find a link to the data set in the video description below. While this walkthrough will use a clean and prepackaged Kaggle dataset to simplify the data processing steps of this tutorial, I encourage you to look beyond websites like Kaggle to find data for machine learning projects. Now, since we've identified our dataset, we will load it into our Python environment using the pandas read CSV function, and then use the head function to glance at what the data looks like. There are lots of columns in this dataset, and you should take the time to explore them. The current machine learning project aims to create a model for predicting airline flight delays, so I'm going to subset the data set to only a few specific columns that will be relevant to this task. This includes the day of the week of the flight, the date and departure time of the week, the airline, and the origin and destination. The carrier delay column represents a flight delay that is the responsibility of the airline itself. This variable is coded either 0 for no delay, or 1 or above representing the number of minutes that the flight was delayed. I can next check for any missing values for any of the variables by combining the is null and sum functions on my data frame. We can see that there are none here. If there were, we would have to make a decision about whether it makes sense to drop the rows of our data that are missing or whether to use some sort of imputation method to fill them in. We can now move on to some light feature engineering. I'll start by converting the date column into a pandas date time object. This will then allow me to extract the month and the day as additional features for the model. I don't extract the year column since the majority of the observations are from a single year. We'll drop the date column since it is no longer needed. The XGBoost library does not allow categorical data into the model. We therefore need to encode these features into dummy variables, alternatively known as one-hot encoding. The pandas get dummies function, with the drop first argument set to true, will create these dummy variables while removing the original categorical features. We next recode the carrier delay column into a new binary encoded variable as our target, which we'll name as delayed 60 plus. I use the numpy where function to first set the condition. If df encoded is greater than 60 minutes, then recode the value to 1, otherwise recode the value to 0. This 60-minute delay condition as our target variable is somewhat arbitrary. I chose it because it represents a substantial, quite annoying delay of a flight. You could alternatively choose 30 minutes, or 2 hours, or even keep the original numeric encoding of the carrier delay variable, and then model the target as a continuous measure. These decisions should be justified by domain expertise and theoretical knowledge of what is the best measure. At this point, all of our features in target have been adequately prepared for analysis. We will next define the features as an object called x and the target as an object called y. This allows us to then use the train test split function from the SK Learn library. We set x and y objects as arguments, select a percentage of the data set that we want to split by, here 30% into the test set and 70% into the train set and then choose a number for the random state so that we can have a reproducible workflow. 
our data is now ready for exploratory data analysis, or EDA. It is important to do the train test split prior to doing EDA because we want to build our model based on unbiased and unseen data. If we perform EDA on the entire data set before splitting, we risk introducing data leakage where information from the test set inadvertently influences the model. This can result in overly optimistic performance metrics during evaluation, as the model may know patterns from the test set. By splitting the data first, we ensure that our model is evaluated on truly unseen data, providing a more accurate measure of its real-world performance. To start exploring the data, I use the pandas comcat function to reconnect the x features with the y target variable. We do this instead of merging because we know that the identifying index rows are already aligned between the features and the target. I then take our already created list of the categorical features and use a for loop to reshape the data frame by converting the one hot encoded dummy variables back into their original categorical form. This is done by identifying the one hot encoded columns for each category, selecting the column with the highest value and replacing the dummy variables with a single column representing the original categorical feature. If we print train underscore set, we can now see that this train data set matches the original structure of the data. We can now do some EDA. I'll start by using the value counts function to identify the number of flights in our training data that were delayed by over 60 minutes. I can also use the mean function to calculate the percentage of flights in the training data that were delayed. We can see that about 25,000 flights out of roughly 340,000 total flights in the training data set were delayed, or about 7.5%. This suggests that there is a large class imbalance in our training data. There are several ways to deal with class imbalances, such as oversampling the smaller class, which here would be the delayed flights, undersampling the majority class, which would be the non-delayed flights, or using specialized algorithms that account for class imbalances. These methods are beyond the scope of this video right now, but make sure to subscribe to the Deep Charts channel to be notified of future tutorials on how to deal with class imbalances. So we've looked at the descriptive statistics of our target variable, but how does the target variable relate to our X features? In this next line of code, I use the group by function aggregated at the day of week to calculate the average percentage of flights that are delayed by the day of the week. We can see that Friday, as coded as day 6, has the most delays at 9%, whereas Wednesday and Thursday, days 4 and 5, have the lowest percent of delayed flights. We can also aggregate delays by origin airport. By chaining the sort values function, we can view the percentage of delays for each origin in either ascending or descending order. This can be visualized as a histogram using the matplotlib library and we can see a right or positively skewed distribution with a long tail. Now, at this point of the analysis, we could do additional EDA, and it might prompt us to do additional feature engineering based on identified trends in the descriptive statistics. However, to keep this video concise, we will now move on to the model building process. From the XGBoost library, I will call the XGB classifier function and set the random state argument to an arbitrary number for replicability and the eval metric to log loss, which will be used by the model internally to score performance while training the model. We save it to an object that I'll call XGB model, and we can peer into which arguments are set by default and those which we just set ourselves. We can now fit the model to the training data, followed by predicting on the X test data set. The model has now been created and predictions have been generated, so it is time to evaluate performance. I'll first use the accuracy score function from the SK Learn Metrics module to calculate overall accuracy. This first takes the Y test values followed by the Y train values. And the accuracy score is very high at over 92%. But this might be misleading, so let's look at the confusion matrix, which was also imported earlier from the SK Learn Metrics module. What we see now is a two by two matrix with the true negatives in the upper left, the true positives in the lower right, the false negatives in the bottom left, and the false positives in the upper right. It's clear that the bulk of delayed flights have been predicted as false negatives in the bottom left cell of the matrix, while only 86 have been accurately predicted in the bottom right cell. Therefore, our high accuracy score from before is misleading, not due to strong model performance, but because the number of delayed flights is so low that the model performs well simply by predicting most flights is on time. 
Another way to assess model performance is by calculating the area under the curve metric and graphing the receiver operating characteristic. The code here, which I won't go into detail, calculates the false positive rate and true positive rate at various thresholds, allowing us to visualize how well the model distinguishes between the classes. The AUC score provides a single value to summarize this performance, with higher values indicating a better model. And the closer the blue curve in the graph gets to the upper left border, the better the model's performance. So we can see that the XG boost model we created is not very high performant. We could do additional tasks such as feature engineering, feature reduction, or hyperparameter tuning to improve the model's accuracy and performance. For this video, I'll show you how to get started with hyperparameter tuning. We first set up a parameter grid with alternate values for key hyperparameters such as the learning rate, the max depth, and estimators and subsample. These are just a few hyperparameters that control how the model learns from the data. You can check out the resources in the video description below to get a better understanding on what each of these do. Next, we initialize the XGBoost model with a random state for replicability and set the evaluation metric to log loss. Then we set up grid search CV to perform a cross-validated grid search over the defined hyperparameters. We place the parameter grid object as the parameter grid argument, and here choose three folds of cross-validation. Finally, we fit the model using the training data. This type of grid search hyperparameter tuning can take some time, especially on a laptop. The grid search CV function will evaluate different combinations of hyperparameters using cross-validation and return the best performing model. This approach helps us optimize the model's performance by fine-tuning the hyperparameters instead of relying on default values. Once all cross-validated combinations of hyperparameters have been run, we can check out the parameters with the best performance and assess the accuracy, confusion matrix, and area under the curve. We can see that the accuracy is practically the same, but an additional 100 delayed flights have now shifted from the false negative quadrant of the confusion matrix to the true positive quadrant. The area under the curve score also only marginally improves. To really improve this model, we would have to do additional feature engineering, make better decisions on what features to include in the model, and then add a wider range of values to our hyperparameter grid search. Let me know if you are able to substantially improve the AUC score in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe to the DeepCharts channel for more machine learning and data science tutorials.